Hi everyone, it's me, Jeanette, here from the Raw Reset. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a certified detoxification specialist. I was trained with Dr. Robert Morris at the International School of Regenerative Detoxification. And I come to you live every Sunday here in our private Facebook group, The Raw Reset, in hopes to hold space for you, any of your questions. You know, we just answer to the best of our ability. We are um, two detoxification specialists who are managing the page, and we have our admin who is also a detoxification specialist. So Candy and Kuba and myself are all here to serve you. And today we have a special guest, Boris. He is a co-owner at the Fruit Haven Eco Village in Ecuador. And we had an interview with him last week and that was so amazing. If you haven't uh, had an opportunity to catch the first one, please do check in our group. You can also check my Instagram, The Healing Junction, and you might be um, better off to type in Toronto if you're not uh, local to um, my neighborhood, which is Toronto, Ontario, Canada, baby. <laughs> so we just had Canada Day. Um, I will chat with you until I see a request uh, from Boris where he will request to join the video. So Boris, if you're here, please do send that request. Um, maybe I could actually try that quick before I, no, I can't. Um, I thought I could maybe invite you. So yeah, maybe I could tag. Let's tag friends. Okay, let me tag Boris just so he sees this. Tag some other beautiful people to let them know that I'm live. And if you're here with me on this live, please do leave a comment so that I know that you're here. Uh, this way I can see you. And yeah, let us know where in the world you're, you're coming in from. Uh, if you want to share a little bit about your healing journey and where you're at with incorporating more raw foods, that would also be really nice, really interesting to hear from you. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk about how we had Canada Day here. And, you know, uh, it's just another excuse to spend money, yeah, all of these uh, holidays. Uh, and also, you know, Canada has uh, been really shining some light on some really heavy matters you know, there was uh, these graves, these unmarked graves, you know, of uh, indigenous children. And I was talking to my mom and she was like, it's almost like they were trying to like wipe out, like the churches were trying to wipe out like the whole race. So yeah, it's been a really heavy time. And, you know, uh, Canada, it was like, no, we're not going to be celebrating. We're not going to be having fireworks. You know, every year they uh, have like big firework shows and yeah, it's just uh, colonialism, you know, so that's a whole other topic. Uh, but today I was just uh, reflecting on, you know, how beautiful it was to have Canada Day and it not be a big deal. Um, you know, why don't we just decide to celebrate life every day, you know, and we are in July, so it's summer here and we have a beautiful hot day. So I was on my walk today and I was just thinking like, how nice it is to be on a high raw fruitarian diet because you know the body is more alkaline so you're able to be out in the hot sun and feel really great because your body's already cool alkali are cool you know they put out the fire so if there's inflammation in the body this is acids these are toxins that the body sees as acids. You know, I also have a certification as an alkaline health coach. So I'm here to talk about the alkaline acid balance anytime you need me. You know, um, preferably when I go live on Sundays, you come on with me and you can ask me about these kind of things. You know, I specialize in this topic. So I just be right back because I'm going to see what's happening with Boris and I'm also going to shut the shade because behind me because I see that it's casting a lot of light. So I'll be right back.
so Boris is in Ecuador and he's in the middle of the jungle and they often have difficulties with their Wi-Fi. So I just send him a message now. And then if this doesn't work out, that's fine. You know, everything works out how it's supposed to. I really have a lot of faith, you know, and, and trust in my higher power and my connection to God. You know, um, I know God can be a hard concept to grasp. I don't believe in an old white man sitting up in the clouds, you know, who is uh, judging and condemning us for everything we do. Um, I think that would be a very limited view of our creator. What I believe in is this energy, this connection to source that is always looking after our highest good. You know, um, what I do with people who maybe are still a little unsure if there is a higher power guiding them, oh, here's Boris, is I ask them to... Just quickly before I add you, Boris, I ask people to look back, you know, like basically ask yourself, would you change where you are in your life right now to go back to maybe where you were five years, 10 years ago? And the answer is always no, because your life is always getting better. And that shows you that there's a higher power looking after your highest good and the highest good of all. Oh, I approve, Boris. Um, on the live. <laughs> That's my happy dance. <laughs> hey! <laughs> there it sounds he is. awesome. I caught the beginning of what you were talking about there. Oh, do you have any thoughts to add while I fix my camera? Um, yeah, I think, well, I didn't catch all of it, but I think you were saying something about improving yeah we're always going to be improving it's uh, an ongoing process it's a journey life is a journey <laughs> yes it so is and to know people like you who are you know constantly working on themselves working on improving you know their health you know whether it be emotionally mentally physically like it's just such an honor so welcome to the call today nice. boris thank you thank for you. For your presence here today, it means so much. I think our members can really benefit from, you know, having you around in our group a little bit more. <laughs> how how is everything <laughs> over there today? Tell us a little bit about what's yeah, going on for you. It's been really sunny now. This kind of changes just rainy or sunny weeks. Every every week is different. So yeah. Oh my been god, it looks on... so beautiful. Here, yeah, I'll do a little video of the garden little vegetable garden i don't know if it's visible there yeah it looks amazing really lush this is the katuk oh, yeah. <laughs> okay if anyone if you're just joining us live boris is in ecuador at the fruit haven eco village and he's just showing us a little bit the garden and you guys have like several hectares of land yeah because i was on your website, fruithaven.org, if anybody's yes. interested in checking them out, I was looking at the option for the land share, the, the group um, land share, yeah. I believe you call that. Yeah, so I was, yeah. the land buy, thank you. Yeah, I sent perfect. it actually to my boyfriend too. I'm like, should we do this? <laughs> I definitely am going to do it one of these days. Um, but basically, I was curious because like, it looks like if I were to buy in on a plot of land there in Ecuador so that I could start up my fruit forest now, because I know fruit trees take many years to start really producing, I yeah. want to start right away. Um, it looks like I would get like a one and a half hectares of land. Uh, well, it depends on... Uh, various factors yeah just basically our page is updated uh, usually pretty often so the group land buy under the land available for sale or something like that sale uh, land available I think that's really what it's called um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it will say which lot so we actually have a few different uh, 
group land by properties and each property is owned by a few different owners. And so if you were to buy into one, you would have a percentage of that um, land. So the way that, for example, Fruit Haven one, we have 26 hectares in total and we have right now six owners and I'm one of them as well and Peter and some others as well. So each owner has a different uh, percentage and that percentage is giving uh, like an amount of, of land that was agreed upon. So we have dedicated an area uh, for the community, just the community area. So that includes like uh, the forest, whatever, the um, house, which usually will have a house that's connected to the internet, which is pretty important to. Uh... So important. Yes, <laughs> we need that. And, and then... sorry to interrupt, Boris. I just want to welcome yeah. River. She's such a dear one. Thank you for being here with us today, River. Let us know if you have any questions about the Fruit Haven Eco Village in Ecuador, you know, and how you can start your own fruit forest there, um, or just anything about living a little bit more of a raw living food, um, living food diet and alkaline lifestyle, which I would say, Boris, you're really doing really great with that. Uh, you were talking about cucumber noodles today earlier oh, yeah. with me on Instagram chat. You're staying really hydrated. Yeah. Like you, you don't feel okay. so affected by the sun because you're so alkaline. Is that true? Or? Yeah, I think so. I think having a highly hydrated yeah, diet, I, I don't even need to drink water really just hydrate by eating fruit that's mostly water and it's in a, a perfect form. <laughs> so, and in yeah. our chat last week, you said your older brother inspired you to get more onto raw foods and, and this yeah. helped you to make your decision to move to Ecuador. You moved from, uh, he moved from Toronto guys. So he really uh, <laughs> just dove right into this lifestyle. He left the city and he just lives like this really natural, sustainable life. He's a permaculture enthusiast and I have so much I can learn from you, Boris. Uh, but you were saying that like that kind of inspired you to go out to Ecuador is like the raw yeah. foods, like well, being able actually, to access I, the fruits. I moved fruits. out of Toronto. Yeah, that was one of the things that I just changed my life already to a pretty drastic point where I decided to be like a full-time traveler. So I would traveling for most of the year and then I would visit my parents in the summertime for maybe a couple months or something. And uh, so, yeah, when I started traveling, I was, yeah, kind of eating more fruits. And then my brother met, yeah, he told me, come to Ecuador, uh, to Thailand, actually, <laughs> not Ecuador at that time, oh, still Thailand. Right. And in right. Thailand, the fruit is really good. And so when he told me, here's this idea, and he wasn't too sure about it yet, but I was always drawn to nature and I was going to uh, nature and hikes and doing all kinds of stuff that involved being further from cities usually i didn't like big cities already i guess for um a while so yeah i guess uh when he told me that fruit diet that all you really need is fruit and then tasting the amazing thailand fruits it just made perfect sense and, and i listened to people like ted carr on youtube mm. he used to be called uh, fruit living i think that was his name now Amazing. Uh, I don't know. It's that car. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. Uh, Dr. Robert Morris, that was a, a bit difficult to understand because he has very long Q and A's, but uh, the general message is there like alkaline and eating mm -hmm. the fruit diet. So that was, yeah. If that you guys don't know Dr. That. Robert Morris yet, sorry, Boris, just to let our members know. Dr. Robert Morris is a mentor and dear friend of mine, and he runs the International School of Detoxification. He's also um, currently building a school of naturopathy. So this isn't naturopathic medicine, guys. This is natureopathy. This is utilizing what nature gives us, you know, the, the beautiful medicines that, you know, Pachamama provides us, right? So Dr. Morris has three PhDs, you know, biochemistry, um, naturopath and uh, herbalist, but like he's so much more than these PhDs in this academia. Like he is just so tapped in, 
you know, um, just, just a true healer. So Boris and I uh, really follow his teachings and want to spread these teachings. So if you need any resources to, you know, learn more about his teachings, feel free to just uh, send a DM and I connect you to his website and everything like that. So tell me, how is Kat doing today? <laughs> is Kat yeah, around? He was around, he ate some cockroaches and <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. some avocado and things like that. Yes, yes. They help to get rid of some of these uh, cockroaches, yeah? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, he loves it. He's, I guess that's his uh, species-specific diet. He's insectivore. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, they're carnivores, right, Kat? Um, but your cat. Us, this cat came to us. It's not uh, something we wanted. We we were just uh, actually sort of in the process, and then we modified our policy. We had the kind of no pets, no animal ideas. But then some ideas came, like, well, maybe there are some animals that are kind of able to live in harmony. And so he's. We don't feed him specifically. If there's some leftover fruits, he eats them or we kind of offer him a little bit or some people give him some fruit and yeah, it's good to have him because now he keeps the rats away. So he naturally will eat them. He loves them. So that's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. And uh, the last call. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. More cockroaches than he can eat. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> Yes, I know. Actually, um, so like here in, in Toronto, if you go stay somewhere and there's cockroaches, it's like you're in a really like you're in a dive, as my dad would call it, right? Oh, that place is a oh, yeah. dive. They got cockroaches. <laughs> but when you're out in the jungle, you know, these are native to to the um, environment. So they're yeah, they're not like indicating that it's a dive or anything. <laughs> further in the jungle. Yeah, I walked around in the far off places where there's no humans and yeah they're just everywhere it's a natural jungle cockroach it's not mm. something that's in filthy areas and yeah we don't mm. have too much filthy areas anyway it's, yeah they kind of i guess if you have structures in this jungle environment the other things want to come live in them so there's yeah there's like uh, cockroaches and spiders and things like that <laughs> So when I'm just curious, like I, I want to share a little bit that might help the members here if they are interested in, you know, potentially coming out there, maybe buying some of the land and starting their fruit forest. Like I was wondering, like, what would it be like if um, if they wanted? Because see, for me, like I would probably just come out as a short, like for a short yeah. duration, maybe like two months max a year right now. I'm just thinking if I were to do this right away. Um, so when I'm there for two months, so kind of two part question, when I'm there for two months, what does the lifestyle look like if I want to live in community with y'all and like, you know, inspire yeah. one another, tell me a little bit about the day to day life with that. Yeah, and then the sure. second part is, is like, tell me what goes on with the land that I purchase and the fruit trees yeah. that I plant, um, when I come back to Toronto. Okay. So yeah, basically the first part is like fzc i'm in the fruit haven one community area so right now we have three community areas so the fruit haven two is uh one that's closer so yeah we have basically some rooms for rent and there are some cabins and uh some of them they're connected to like here we have uh internet to the fruit haven two right now they don't because they don't have the power yet but i think they're in the plan to get solar panels and fruit haven three they also have solar panels, so they do have internet there. And that one is even more remote and distant. So we have uh, like some local fruits that we can harvest. So things like bananas, some, sometimes we can get other papaya, some greens, some local types of lettuces and spinaches, and of course, katuk and <laughs> other things like that. And then for the rest of the fruit, you can make, there's a weekly fruit order. We have also a village nearby that's, got some fruits actually they're getting better and better at stocking up and then two nearby cities that have even bigger markets uh Hi. that's where we get the fruit order so you can either go there if you're just whatever want to get it yourself or visit the city and then a uh, small city it's not very a big one and um the other way is just to use the fruit order system where it comes right to your door basically to where you, whichever community area you'll be one two or three and uh, yeah, the kitchens are basic right now. We have 
blenders and sometimes juicers depending on who's here because usually uh the communal ones get broken so then it's like a personal someone will bring it and they'll allow other people to use it but i found juicing with the blender is just fine so with the nut belt nut milk bag <laughs> Mm, nice, and nice. what else fridge we don't have uh there is a dehydrator which is also somebody's personal one and in case he might take it but uh for now we do use it so we dehydrated some chilies and make a chili powder we grow chilies as well pretty easily here amazing so yeah we have are they vitamix the blenders or are they high speed uh it's not a vitamix but it is a high speed and it does a good job mm. at anything we threw at it. So we did like nut cheeses. Many times I've done all kind, you know, mixes of uh, whether it's coconut meat and walnuts or other, yeah, whatever, cashews, almonds, uh, macadamia, those kinds of things we can get from the towns here as well, which they've been getting stocked up better. Like in the past few years, you couldn't even find those things. And now we've nice, been demanding nice. it. So they. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. It. The demand is there. Uh, so, okay, mm -hmm. so if I'm over on Fruit Haven 3, this is where I purchase my land. Um, how far of a walk if I want to come hang with, you're at Fruit Haven 1, yeah? Yeah. I think it's So what about, if I want to uh, come into 30, your uh, kitchen yeah. or communal area or something? Sure, yeah. We visit each other often. Yeah, it's about 30, 40 minute walk. Uh, walking nice, down nice. is easier than up. So Fruit Haven 3 is 200 meter higher elevation. So it's a two okay. kilometer walk. Uh, or a drive. Ooh. We do have a good road now. So there's motorbikes. If it's dry, you can use quads or whatever. You can also either purchase or I'm not sure maybe people will rent them. Uh, I think in the States included that you could get a trip back and forth. And of course, the fruit order, uh, which has some extra whatever, a couple bucks. But generally, it's pretty cheap lifestyle. Like you could probably get away with $20, $30 a week on food most people it's spend ridiculous. like that yeah i just want to yeah, welcome yeah. anyone to our live to boris if you're on live with us and you have any questions for boris he's a co-owner at the fruit haven eco village he's a high raw fruitarian you know permaculture design enthusiast please uh, just pop those in the comments if you're catching the recording we'll also come back and we will respond so thank you so much for being here you're so welcome and uh boris thank you for for your attention and your presence and for for, you know, just being a special guest here. Oh, yes, it's our pleasure. It's, yeah, I got such I good feedback. Section. Sure, yeah. Awesome. yeah. <laughs> yeah, from our last week's call, people were freaking out. And then I went and I grabbed some fruit this week at Agro Trading. It was really cool. My boyfriend actually came with me for the first time. So Jessica Santos, she's one of our members here in our eyes, these beautiful women from Ecuador who moved here and their family has this business called Agro Trading. And they're just shipping overnight air, like the highest quality fruits from Ecuador, Colombia, Cuba. Um, so I'm I'm kind of acting as a resource center for this just because it's just what I eat and people are always like, where are you getting all these fruits that you're posting? Like, how are you getting this great quality fruit in Toronto? So I was over there visiting and grabbing my fruit and they just were like, oh, Boris this and Boris that. And like your name came up a whole bunch of times because oh, yeah. they had watched uh, last week's nice. live. So yeah, they had nothing but amazing things to say. And they wanted to know where specifically you were. I did give them your okay. website. Yeah. Um, yeah, because, you know, of nice. course, they're, they're pretty familiar with Ecuador, so Yeah, so we're from in there. the southeast part, in between two big cities, um, kind of big cities. One is called Gualaquisa, and the other one is Pangi. And the little village that we're near is called Chichumblesa, that's the name. Uh, but, yeah, if you want to see how they're spelled, it's kind of uh, somewhere on their website there on the bottom and the yes. contact areas. And then we'll give mm -hmm. like exact directions and how to get here and stuff with for people that are already about to arrive. We prefer people nice. tell us like before they're coming so we're prepared and like we have a room available or a tent if they prefer a tent. Usually most people want rooms these days, but sometimes we have volunteer people that want to do more low budget. And yeah, of course, mm -hmm. uh, as you stay with us, you're welcome to join us to like learn about how to maintain the fruit trees, how we design stuff, how we plan stuff like dealing with the challenges and what we learned, what we we're still learning every day. Like it's always constant improvement. So 
we That's do what amazing. we can. <laughs> Yeah, I think even just it, like somebody like me who's not so hands on, like who knows her limitations when it comes to like, you know, <laughs> you know, work like hard work outside in the jungle. Um, because, you know, I used to have dreams of, of, you know, just basically living in the jungle. And then I went out there and I was humbled. Uh, so I think even somebody like me who were to just come and live like, you know, a little bit more, um, you know, like not volunteering, but just like coming on, like as a vacation, you know, I still think that there would be so much to learn, just like hanging out around the area, hanging out Absolutely. with all you, you know, we so can do guys, some if tours. we have uh, two waterfalls, so one near Food Haven three is a big one, nice oh. pool. And then another one in this area, also a really yeah. big one. And there's a small oh, yeah. one that's so actually three in total <laughs> a small one fruit haven uh one here that's a, a kind of shower one and it's not that small it's just uh, less water but it's still a pretty good size for shower and everything waterfalls are the best to shower in <laughs> That is yes. so cool. In Costa Rica, I would just like walk and discover like a random waterfall and there would be like some like glycerin based soap, like just there, just in case anyone uh, needs to have a shower, <laughs> the communal soap. <laughs> um, but guys, if I see a couple of people are here joining us. So if you're just joining, please pop a little hello in the comments so that Boris and I know that you're here with us and let us know where in the world you're coming in from. And if you have any questions about transitioning over to a more raw living food diet or alkaline lifestyle like Boris and I have adopted you know we're here to serve you in whatever way possible if you want to know how you can start your own fruit forest now you know this is also why we're here uh, I understand that you have different lots you're speaking about fruit haven That's one good, yeah. two and three and that the third one is a higher elevation I wanted to know how does that affect in um, like the fruit in terms of like what you can grow. Does, does that difference make much of a difference over yeah, at the different some fruit difference. havens? So there are certain fruits that might do better up there and vegetables, they do better at the slightly cooler. So, so things like lettuces, they prefer a cooler elevation. And then there's other uh, like citruses, they like some, some of them prefer it and there's some other advantages but then uh you also have some disadvantages so for example things like durian might not do as well in the cooler it depends on the types of durian there's different varieties so we'll usually assist you in like what we research we go you know deep in there and try to understand which plants people are talking about it there's like tropical fruit growing forums and different research that mm -hmm. uh, peter and jason and other people before me and now i'm learning and also the other community, Terra Frutis, that started actually the sister community uh, before this one. And they have also a lot of research and experience now with different elevations and different, even just in the same land, you might have some area with better soil, some better with poorer soil. And it's uh, all about how we amend the soil because the climate is mostly similar here. So getting higher elevation will make it a bit cooler and drier. And yeah, that's mm. going to assist you in so yeah, maybe I can go into some details. So we have basically each mm -hmm. fruit haven is like a big individual, what the locals call a farm, but really it's just a big piece of land. Um, and that piece of land, usually they sell for whatever, they just want to go get rid of it. Like the local people, they might sell, um, you know, between 20, 30 or 60 hectares or something or 70 sometimes. Oh. So huge pieces of land, which make it difficult for one person to own because it's expensive they might sell it between a hundred or more thousand dollars and uh, that's uh, quite a lot of land to manage for one person so it's really neat that we can combine between each other and we can buy for say like ten thousand a person uh, for about whatever ten or more people and then we have some extra budget oh my mom is here hello <laughs> i was gonna and, say uh, <laughs> i'm not sure i figured she was related but i didn't yeah. know who she was to you hello boris as well you have <laughs> done such an amazing job with this one i think that <laughs> all mothers need to hear this sometimes you know i just i mean it it's from my heart like I feel so inspired by your son and Boris, I'm not trying to, you know, make you blush, but it's just been such a pleasure and such an honor getting to know you a bit better and getting to know what your passions are and your joys. And yeah, it's just really inspiring. 
So welcome, yeah, Anna. You're so welcome here. Thanks for joining our group too, the Raw Reset. I saw that you're in there now. So that is really cool. Yeah. Thanks, Boris. You brought a <laughs> nice. lot of people over. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh. It's my pleasure. I'm just being honest. <laughs> so um, I was, yeah, that's really interesting. I, I feel like I could learn a lot more from you about permaculture and, uh, you know, just like growing my own food and things like that. And I think now is like the most important time, you know, for us to learn how to do this. So this is really, really beautiful that you're offering this. So yeah, I really can't wait to come out to Ecuador. You said little vegetable gardens and Yes, yes. Well, we have started growing herbs at my boyfriend's place because he has like an outdoor space. I don't because I live in a co-op here in Toronto. Mm -hmm. So it's more of an apartment kind of thing. Um, and yeah, it's it's definitely some work even to just grow a few like herbs. He planted one um, sunflower. It's growing so tall. We're like nervous, like, oh no, we had to get a stick because we're like, what if it falls over? But I can't wait for the big sunflower to come. And uh, and then he planted a few tomato bushes. But yeah, I have some experience with gardening and it's it's not really for nice. everyone, is it? Like, <laughs> you have to have it's a nice thought. Thumb, yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you this then because I'm really so interested in this opportunity. I want to have a plot of land there and I want to know um, how will how will the land like be cared for when I am in Toronto? This kind of goes oh, a yeah. little bit so, backwards to where we were before. Yeah, let's go back to that. So each one of these big lots, uh, well, actually, I guess we'll call them fruit haven. So which numbered one, two, three, and now we have four. There's also uh, that's, future ones well actually they're purchased like seven and nine as well as ten so ten has also got lots so each one gets broken into these lots and mm -hmm. so you can buy a certain lot uh in a certain fruit haven so i think now i think there's basically well, yeah maybe most of them do have a lot for sale somewhere but some of them might not be marked out. So once you have your lot that say you picked and you figured out, okay, that's where you want it. Um, and maybe there's one that's already at a specific place. So you buy that and then you can tell, uh, mostly it's been Peter that's been doing the managing and he will uh, take care of whatever project. So for example, if you want to do a planting and he will make an estimate, like how much will it cost to do a certain plantation and you know you want to plant certain things and we'll do it in a permaculture style and we'll uh first do we need to clear the land and the soil amendments that require the kind of companion plants and all, all that's required and we'll do that estimate for you and now i've been working on some of them as well for a few of the lot owners in uh, fruit haven 2 and fruit haven 10 as well so yeah it's been pretty fun like uh let's see where am i going to plant someone else's uh, jackfruits and durians and citrus and all kinds of cool stuff so wow that is so cool so so you guys would help with the actual planting because see i was thinking yeah. that i would come and have to plant it all and start it all and then you guys would just like help me maintain it when i'm in toronto or well, we can do yeah we can do the planting and the construction if you're already plan planning to come or some people they are planning to rent it out so they want to construct something or if they want to just add value to their lot and then resell it for a higher value. That's also an option, mm. I guess. Uh, we did have, wow. yeah, so there is one lot that has a food forest and a house and that one is more expensive. I think the last asking price was 45,000. Mm. Um, mm. Oh yeah, I need to check if I didn't forget to update on the website. So that would right, be under right. Food Haven Good to reminder. see what's available. So if you go down to land available in that group land by page, and then each fruit haven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> up until 10. Actually, five and six are not purchased yet, but the owner mm, of mm. the land there, the Ecuadorian owner still doesn't want to sell it, but I think eventually he will. <laughs> okay, cool. And I'm going to just pop in the comments your website just so that people can go on and take okay. a little look at that. So thank you for that information. That's really, really helpful. 
I just cannot wait to hear from our members and, and hear if they are uh, as excited about, you know, having a little fruit forest as I am. <laughs> so it's just yeah. fruithaven.org. And we can tell you, for example, jackfruits, they can take about three years to fruit. So that's not too long. Bananas can take mm. about one year, one and a half years. So that's really fast. Papayas within a year. So if you want the more long-term trees, things like durian and mangosteen, they could take seven to 10 or more years. So you might want to get those planted as soon as possible. And then things like I citrus, do. they could take uh, Yeah, avocados can be like maybe seven, depends on the varieties depends if they're grafted and yeah various factors and how well they maintain so every three months is probably a good uh, schedule to fertilize them weed around them and that's usually what most of the lot owners that aren't here they'll uh, ask for us to to send we have lots of workers lots of local people are happy to be employed for us we pay higher than mm -hmm. normal wages so <laughs> That is so beautiful. So guys, if you were to ever, you know, get involved in this, then you are actually helping the local people in Ecuador. You know, there's, there's so much good karma in what you're doing and you're going to help yourself because you're going to have access to food all the time that you're growing, you know, just in case we don't have to get too heavy now, but um, you know, it's, it's, it might be a real important thing for our future to start really growing our own food and thinking more sustainably. Yeah, I have a vision that we have all these neighbors that are all mostly maybe even uh, fruitarian, but even if some of them uh, want to cook some food, yeah, we have people that plant various uh, tubers that grow really easily, like yuca or cassava and taro oh, and things so like that. Good. It's so good. Everyone's growing food and we're all neighbors and, and yeah, we can always exchange like, oh, I have too many lemons and you have some avocados or whatever and we'll make a salad together, you know? <laughs> yes. Speaking of which, what are some of like the most abundant fruits that you're growing right now? And, and in terms of like the size of the trees, like what are some of your largest, because you spoke about avocados and I, I did uh, stay up in the mountains on Maui in my past. And he, this right. man that I had the Airbnb with, he had a huge avocado tree. So I'd love to hear a little yeah. bit more about that. Well, let's see. Uh, the most easily grow thing here is basically bananas. They grow basically like a grass. They're not really a tree. So they produce a lot of fruit. Uh, we are usually very abundant in bananas if we harvest them. It takes, Yum. like you have to get them off the, off the thing and harvest them. And we have the, uh, like last time we talked about about a dozen varieties. There's probably hundreds, but we only have about a dozen or something. <laughs> and- Yum, um, I love bananas. <laughs> it's so good. You can dehydrate them. You can make desserts oh, yeah. out of them. Bana frozen banana and ice cream. Like, you don't even want to get me out there, Boris. I'm going to totally take over your whole kitchen and I'm going to be making yeah, all kinds of, well, maybe you do want to get me out. I feed you, you yeah, know. Yeah, we <laughs> have all kinds of fun. Do you have an <laughs> and, avocado uh, tree? Yeah, or? So, uh, yeah, so we have most of our avocados are pretty small and young. We have grafted trees that are um, still not producing here, but at Terra Frutis, and then, uh, which is another community, sister community near us. Um, How far are they from you, we, by the way? Oh, an hour, an hour uh, by car? By, by road, yeah. So we can access okay. them either with the taxi, which is uh, around 20 bucks for the taxi, or uh, with a bus. But then we would have to take a, probably two buses or one bus and a taxi, which would make it a bit cheaper, like 13, 14 mm. bucks or something. Um, one hour is not bad at all. That's really yeah, close. That's not bad. Actually, a bit less in a taxi, I think. The buses usually take a bit longer. But we do have a neighbor that has avocado trees, but they're seasonal. In terms of the market, you could get avocados year-round. They're usually mm. about 50 cents per avocado, and they're not the same husk type. There are different kinds. Sometimes you can find that kind. Sometimes we find different. There are many varieties of avocados, just like any Really? Because I only know I only know Haas, which is really creamy, just if our members are catching yeah. this, you know, um, they're really creamy. I think they're maybe probably the creamiest of avocados. But then again, I only know two kinds. So the <laughs> other one I know is the big green skin one, and it's like more higher in water content. So it's like yeah, almost like light. 
lighter, juicier, not so rich, which I find can be digested a lot better for some people. What are the yeah. other ones like? Uh, there is, we have two grafted varieties. So the, the cultivars, the cultivated var varieties, someone gives a name like Haas is some guy's name that back in, I don't know, the 1900s or something in California or somewhere, he, that was his name, right? And so there's another one that's named Choquette and that's a, a nice pretty one there. That's the variety that we have. Hasn't fruited yet, but it will probably fruit in the next year or two, I don't know. And then another and one And what does that called, one taste like? Uh, I'm not sure. I think they said, yeah, very good. If it's okay. grafted, then usually it'll be a good tasting one. Um, Sorry, what, what does grafted other... mean? A grafting is like uh, when you take a specific variety, so uh, from another tree, and there is a special process to attach it to the rootstock oh, of that other right. one. So every time that you have a specific fruit that is named so for example um, uh, Macintosh apple or granny smith or pink lady or whatever th those are all grafted because if you take a seed and you plant that in the ground the fruit that's going to give is going to be different than the parent it's kind of like think Come about on. your parents are different than you so they're wow. all not all trees are like that but most of them so citrus and avocado so if you take that hus seedling and you plant that you're going to wait for five, seven, whatever amount of years, and the fruit is going to be totally different, not nothing like the one that you had. <laughs> but it'll still be an avocado. It'll be an avocado, but it'll be totally different. It'll probably have a green skin. It might not be very big. It might, I don't know. There could be so many varieties. Interesting. That every kind of avocado is different. So when there's some good variety, then people will name them. They'll say, okay, this is a a good variety and I'm going to make it a cultivated variety, which is short for cultivar. And um, mm -hmm. so the cultivars are what we want to focus on because we know those are good for either they produce a lot of fruit and they're big and specific qualities like they're very tasty, they're uh, creamy, whatever. So like Haas has a very mm. nice quality. It's like it's got the black skin so you know it's ripe, whereas the other avocados, they stay green so you have to feel them and see that they're getting soft and then uh, which is fine you know a lot of them are still delicious like we have some the neighbor here and he planted seedlings and they're huge gigantic trees i think he has about three or four of them and each one is totally different but some of them are great some are not so good so it really depends on the luck basically <laughs> and That's also so grafting. interesting yeah, yeah the grafting will mean that you'll have a shorter tree because it's kind of you're adding this other piece of genetics to this plant and then it will stay shorter and it'll fruit faster and it'll give you a very specific type of fruit so we also have some grafted so star cool. fruits and mami sapote and black sapote oh. if you know about that one. Oh my god yeah so we have Yay. actually black what about sapotes. do you have do you have any uh, mirror? I love black sapote. Oh, yeah, it's like chocolate fruits. pudding. I was just going to ask. Yeah, do you have those? Yeah, we those? have miracle fruit. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, those are think? pretty much the same when we plant them. It's not going to be a big genetic variation. So, yeah, we just pick them. They're a small bush. And, uh, do you it's think not they would stay right fresh now. to ship them? Like, do you, do you guys ever, um, like, ship I anything over? I considered about maybe dehydrating it to see if the effects are still going to mm. remain. But it doesn't Do you want to tell our members what that's all about? Or? Uh, yeah. yeah, so in case anyone doesn't know, there's a little berry that uh, was found somewhere in Africa um, in tropical areas, I guess. And uh, basically, when you eat it, it sort of changes your taste buds. So if you have anything sour, it could be a lemon or it could be a pineapple or even um, yeah, any other sour fruits. Uh, they'll kind of taste a bit sweeter. It sort of changes. It has this chemical called miraculin. So <laughs> that's how it does Miraculin? That. That's miraculous. <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. No, I'm just the kidding. Miracle it would be <laughs> <laughs> that oh, is yeah. honestly my favorite thing to do. Like, okay, I wanted to ask you on this kind of note because I'm already imagining coming out there and doing like a miracle fruit tasting 
you know, where we just like host this little like event where everyone eats the miracle berries and then they try, like you give them the most sour thing, like lemons, or I don't know if you have those ones they have in Costa Rica that are called, um, they taste like lemons, but they look like oranges. Oh yeah. We have an orange lemon. I guess they call them Mandarin lemon, limon mandarina. Oh, mandarina. Yes. Yes. So we could like cut up some of those, like just put the really most sour things and that it's just so much fun guys. Like Boris isn't lying. Like everything tastes so sweet after you have this. So you could just be eating lemon straight and, or you could eat something sweet like papaya and it just tastes so much better. Like, I don't know, it just enhances the taste of the fruit. Um, Because I was going to ask like, okay, so obviously that would be like a little fun like thing we could do if I come out there. But I was also wondering like for our members, if they come and they want to spend some time at the Fruit Haven, you know, uh, what what could they do with their free time? Like if you said there is some yoga, like can they, um, are there like things where you can like, basically give a donation or pay to attend classes or anything like this? Yeah, sometimes people offer. Right now, we uh, don't have the big facilities yet here. Uh, there's going to be like a community center being built, but that'll take some time on Fruit Haven 2, which is halfway to Fruit Haven 3. So that'll wow. be a great place. Right now, there's a bigger focus, many people kind of building their own structures. So Mm. there's uh, Mm. people do like little bits at a time. There'll be like people exchanging or doing massages and yoga. Sometimes ceremonies like San Pedro, you might have heard of. Oh, this (laughs) is like so the life I dream of. (laughs) Oh, yes. Plant medicine ceremonies, cacao ceremonies, ecstatic dance parties. Like this is what we all ought to be doing. Yeah. So at Terra Frutis, this is where the big community uh, yoga hall so often they'll invite us uh, sometimes we actually invite them here as well even though our facilities are more limited but it's also kind of cozy we have the house so we'll do like Christmas dinner potluck uh, everybody makes different uh, raw vegan dishes and stuff like that and uh, and then so good. As well. oh, hello Erica <laughs> welcome Erica <laughs> you know and Erica she, uh, Boris? Yeah. Yeah, she's right here in the other room. <laughs> she's oh, from Chile. Oh, you're so welcome here, Erica. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. You are living in paradise over there, I hear. Waterfalls, cacao ceremonies, yoga, meditation, beautiful souls like yourselves, you know, who are vibing really high. This is the life. So I commend you both for living this way. And oh, the, thank you for being in the raw community. reset. There's also interesting aspects we're exploring as we're living together. You know, there's conflict. So we're working on conflict resolution through NVC, nonviolent communication. Yes. Do you know that I'm all about this, Boris? Oh, yeah. Oh my God. Let me tell you really quickly because we have so much in common and we will, we'll wrap this up in about five minutes. uh, So I won't take long. And if anybody has any questions before we sign off, you know, Boris has given us uh, the pleasure of having his presence here today. So he knows a lot about permaculture, you know, uh, growing your own fruit forest, living more raw um, with a raw diet, alkaline lifestyle. So just let us know before we close off. But yeah, I wanted to let you know that just a little short story that, um, I think it's been like maybe a year and a half since I was in Costa Rica. And the whole reason I went there for two months was to learn how to live in harmony with others, to live in community. So I was offered two choices. I was offered a house by myself or a house that was shared. Both of them had a Vitamix blender, so I knew I'd be happy. Um, So I said, you know what, give me the one with community because I understand that the area that I went, I I understood that it was was already being, um, it was already a a little tight knit community where everybody kind of leans on each other. And I knew I was getting into that, but I wasn't sure if I was ready to live with other people because, you know, I don't know about you guys who are watching, but in terms of family systems, you know, like mine was not the healthiest, my, my upbringing, you know, um, not everybody is brought it, you know, brought up in this way where it's, it's like a communal kind of respectful, nonviolent way of living, you know, so I really wanted the challenge. And I went out there and I learned a lot about myself and my own tolerance levels. And uh, also my own um, 
resistance to really showing up for other people in community, you know, because I was raised with, oh, you, you got to fend for yourself, you know, um, you got to be independent. And it turns out, guys, that that goes directly against our nature as human beings. We actually are interconnected beings who heavily rely on one another. Like, just think about your food, where, you know, just think about your day. Everything that happens in your day, it's not just you controlling it. You know, there's people that grew the food that you're eating. There's the people that put, stock the shelves. What about if you're on transportation, the people that are running the transportation service or maybe who made your car or whatever. You got to understand that we're interconnected and we have to rely on one another. So that is so beautiful. When I came home from Costa Rica, I got into nonviolent communication and the teachings of Marshall Rosenberg. And I've been sharing it yeah. on my Instagram page so that's so beautiful that you're doing so this conflict resolution there and yeah, yeah I'm so happy that came up because maybe we could even do a live on like just that subject because that is so oh, yeah, fascinating that would be interesting. I would like to learn more and, <laughs> and you always surprise it. me Boris like oh my god do, this is so we cool. used to do it on a weekly basis so we would have one day of NVC and another for like a meeting just a general meeting and another day maybe doing like papaya maintenance and, and harvesting and things like that and <laughs> that's so cool do you want to give us a little example of anything that's happened recently where nonviolent communication came into play or is that a bit too lengthy uh yeah there's been various events i don't know i can't think of a specific one there has been a few of them <laughs> yeah it happens yeah. it's bound to happen like when i was in costa rica there was this family coming through she owned the house right it was her family and they would come through the house every day with their three children two that were quite young and one that was like nine years old and the husband and wife and they would just pass through like almost like a tornado of energy and I'd be there like just finishing all my morning practices, you know, like just really all like Zen. And then they'd come in and I'm like, am I really that Zen? Because I'm reacting to their energy. I'm not able to just like contain my own energy within myself. It was like parts of me are being pulled into their stuff, you know? So yeah, maybe we, we talk a bit more about living in community <laughs> next time and, and how we can really learn and nice grow. To see what She's a Fruit Haven 2 lot owner and uh, she's building a house that's, yeah, that I'm helping with uh, some planting of projects that she's doing. So it's really awesome. <laughs> You're bringing us all the most amazing people. Thank you, Boris. Were there any, any, any final words or anything else you'd like to say before we say goodbye today? Yeah, just uh, check out our website and uh, yeah, if you have any questions, pop us a, a question either in the comments or a private message or whatever you feel most comfortable with and uh, yeah. Come and people can follow out. you it's too, good. like on Instagram, on they can YouTube, follow yeah, Instagram, Fruit Adventure Boris. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the Fruit Haven YouTube also has some cool uh, videos. We might be putting some documentary out and in the next few, uh, I don't know, weeks or so. Ooh, what would that be on? <laughs> Is it on what you're developing out there? Yeah, just, the, just all, all the communal aspects and there's a lot of good footage with drones from above and sunsets and all kinds of things like- I can't wait. <laughs> oh my God, that is so cool. Okay, so just, just to clarify for our members, so please check out Fruit Haven Eco Village on YouTube. Please follow them on Instagram, Fruit Haven Eco Village, Ecuador, and also Fruit Adventure Boris on Instagram. And uh, you can also maybe friend him on Facebook if you want to stay connected. But mainly, please check out fruithaven.org. And yeah, just leave any comments. You know, if you're catching the recording, we will be checking back. And if you joined us live, thank you so much for being here dear ones you know without you this uh, would not be possible so i really just am so grateful and so humbled by your presence thank you boris so thank much you. for your attention today thank you as well you've been awesome making this uh whole show here basically <laughs> it's pretty cool <laughs> it's just like 
so much fun to do this. I was like, I was telling my boyfriend, I'm like, oh, I'm having Boris on again. And I was like, who do I think I am? Like, I have my own show or something. It's so funny. But no, it's it's just really um, such a great opportunity for me to show up in service as a resource center for all things healing, you know. That's what I like to focus on. So you're doing a really great job. Keep up the great work, <laughs> Boris. I'm sending Thank so you. much love. I'm there with you in spirit, having miracle fruit with you. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see you again. Oh, you know what? I do have one more thing. If you want to yeah. know about uh, yeah. in Toronto, there's a Switchless. company or it's like an organization that is called Not Far From a Tree. Have you heard of them? Oh, not far from a tree. And, no, uh, not yet. Basically, there's people that have a lot of fruit trees that can't pick their fruit. So they'll tell these uh, organizations and then they'll go. If I maybe find a link or something, I might post that somewhere. And uh, basically, that would be amazing. Yeah, they're just <laughs> talking with the owners of the trees and um, they basically it, split it in three ways. So they have the the fruit that the pickers, volunteers come out and pick, then they'll give the, a portion to the owner, a portion to a donation, and a portion to those people that picked. So it's usually things like um, mulberries or grapes or whatever grows there, cherries and apples and peaches and plums. That's and <laughs> really interesting. I'd love to be connected to that resource. Um, also, before we go, I, I met a woman yesterday at my peace circle that I attend, and she mentions to me about a uh, spiritual eco village here in Toronto, right in the annex oh. where I am. That's um, primarily, well, it's actually you have to be vegan or vegetarian to live there. Yes. So I'm going to check into that too, guys. If you need a resource, you reach out. Yeah, that thank you for that cool. reminder, <laughs> Boris. Yay, will nice. we talk again soon? Thank you, dear Hello. one. Enjoy the beautiful day. Lots of love. Thank you, you too. Have a good one. <laughs> Bye.